five things that I wish I would have known when I was first starting my career as a beginner scrum master. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel, drop a like if you get value out of this video, and if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know in the comment section below. And most importantly, if you wanna share your story about when you were starting out as a scrum master, let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to hear and read those stories as well. Let's jump into today's topic. So I've been a scrum master for about 10 years now. I still remember when my manager asked me to clear my calendar and go to about a week long training where I was gonna learn this revolutionary new way of doing work because our team was supposed to show everybody else and enforce these agile principles for the rest of the company. Our company, our team specifically, we worked on a tool was basically a precursor to ADO, Azure DevOps. It was called Team Foundation Server. And we wanted everybody that was using Visual Studio and TFS, Team Foundation Server, to follow these agile ways of doing life. And so naturally, I was trained in the way of agile and it was actually quite fun. We learned by playing football and the instructors that I had, they were employees of the company, but they made this really, really cool. And I just remember, this was the most fun I had ever had in a corporate training. Now keep in mind, I've only been out of college for about a year or two at this point, but it was still really, really fun. But now that I've been a Scrum Master for 10 years, and I look back, it's so much easier to connect your dots looking backwards, as Steve Jobs says. And there's a couple of things that I wish I would have known. Specifically, there's five things that I wanna share with you here today that today I probably take for granted, but had I known these things, 10 years ago when I was starting out my career, I think they would have made all the difference in the world. Item number one, taking a class, even though this is how I started this video, but taking a class isn't enough to get you to be like a professional scrum master. A lot of companies will pay for training so that their folks, they can be trained in the way of agile in the way of scrum, but just because you take a class doesn't make you scrum or agile in any way, shape or form. This stuff, you have to live it. You have to be in the trenches. You have to be running your sprint planning meetings. You have to be running your daily scrums. You need to be an active participant. And just because you learn the concepts, the way of doing it in a training, life is a little bit different. And so I think too many people are like, I just wanna take a class and I'm gonna be ready, but the class doesn't really get you ready. It gives you the foundation but every team, every company is gonna be slightly different. I've worked with dozens of teams over my career and every single team has just done Scrum ever so slightly different. So future me, now I can appreciate that I have to be adaptive. I have to be responsive to the way the process. There's, I have to hold the team accountable to the course of Scrum, the, the platform and the foundation of Scrum, but Scrum is beautiful because you can also adapt a little bit and there's some flexibility to make sure that your teams work for within your culture and work within your processes and your workflows. So that would be the one thing is I put so much value in that one initial training that a lot of teams believe that if they just train their employees, if they just do the live training or, or online training or whatever, they're going to be ready. They're going to be ready for action. And this couldn't be farther from the truth, right? Like you need to live it. You need to be in the trenches and you need to be practicing Scrum every single day to really truly start grasping that concept. Point number two is very similar. It's on the same note, but a lot of people feel that if you are certified in Scrum, like you have your PSM or your CSM or any of the other myriad of certifications you can get, that if you hire folks with those certifications, or if you pay to have your folks train in those certifications, life's gonna be easier. And so looking back over my tenure career, I have never been certified Scrum Mastered or any of the certifications up until literally the last six months. And I've been able to do Scrum at scale and very effectively for my tenure tenure of, of being in this world, all without a certification. So I think too many people put an emphasis on hey, I'm not only gonna hire folks if they're CSM certified or PSM certified. I think too many leaders out there in the world, they enjoy hiring these paper tigers and I don't see the value, right? So if I was, I'm looking back and I wish I would've known at the beginning, and this kind of doesn't really apply too much for me because I was never certified, but I know there was always a big emphasis throughout my career from my managers to be certified. 
I just I test really really poorly and I've always kind of dodged and and missed having to be certified but I definitely know especially right now when you go look at job recs and just the general qualifications and requirements of getting a job as a scrum master everybody's kind of asking and pushing for these certifications but in my opinion they're completely pointless because again going back to my previous point if your individuals don't actually practice the way if they're not actually knee deep into the trenches of practicing and actually using Scrum and Agile principles, a piece of paper is not going to do you any good. It's not going to tell you anything. There is nothing, nothing in the certifications that apply to the way your company runs things, the culture of your company, the dynamics of your team. Like all of that is on the job training. And that piece of paper is just going to let you know that somebody knows what a sprint planning is and what a story point is, but it's not going to do us any actual effective work when the rubber meets the road. That's point number two. Point number three, your soft skills are far more important than your technical skills. Now this can be a little bit more challenging to digest. So let me explain. Going back on point number one, right? Of If we train our folks, if we certify our folks, they're gonna be ready to do Scrum. But those are technical skills that you're learning in those trainings and certifications. Those are learning the mechanics of Scrum. While they're very important, right? You obviously can't just make it up. You have to know how to plan a sprint. You have to know how to do a review. You have to know how to do all those scrum-like activities. The most important skill that I now look back over my tenure career isn't my ability to use Jira or to know how to start a sprint or close a sprint. My most important skill is my emotional intelligence, is my EQ. It's my ability to understand the tone, the frustrations, the culture, the dynamics of a team, and being able to address conflict, challenges, and just overall friction between team members. Having soft skills, being able to be an effective leader, and being able to influence without any authority, to me, in my opinion, is a far greater skill to have than anything a CSM or a PSM or any Agile Jira training would do for you. You have to know how to work with people. Being a scrum master requires you to walk on eggshells all day long. It's one of the most emotionally exhaustive roles out there. And you have to get a bunch of people that may hate each other, that may be really unhappy with themselves, that may be going through personal challenges in their in their life. Then you have to make them to all work together so that we can all deliver a project. And you can't do this. You can't deliver technical stuff without the human element in the loop. And that's something that I wish I would have learned. That's something I wish I would have been trained on early on in my career because had I developed those people skills at the beginning of my career, I think me being a scrum master or a project manager would have been like infinitely easier because I would have known how to navigate through those very, very, very challenging trenches. Soft skills, FTW, the ultimate FTW here because they're just not talked about enough but if you have a very strong leader with strong and high EQ, you are going to have like the best scrum team ever. Item number four that I wish I would have learned 10 years ago was I'm not just a secretary. I think being a scrum master, um, it's very easy to fall into this trap of, oh, I just schedule meetings or I just make sure that the teams are meeting together or I'm taking notes. I'm adding work into Jira. I'm transitioning work in Jira. I'm doing a bunch of little little secretarial work. And I think it's easy to fall into that trap because it's easy. It's easy when you have high imposter syndrome and you just want to not get fired. You just want to keep your job. And it's really easy to just do busy work thinking that you're adding value. But as I look back over my tenure, tenure here, treating your job as a scrum master as a secretary is very, very dangerous. It's very... It, it positions you in such a way that you don't actually bring value to the company. So today, when I'm a Scrum Master, I'm rolling my sleeves up and I am testing code and I am being engaged and hands-on with those impediments. I'm really trying to understand the fundamentals of impediments and really trying to help the team come up with a solution and one that is a sound solution from a technical perspective. So it's not enough to just update and move and create things in Jira. You have to be more engaging. You have to help the team and actually provide value. Because when you start providing value to the company, once you start actually being part of the team, you will then realize that you have way more to offer than just secretarial things. And another little slight note that I wanna do here, sometimes, and at least all throughout my career as a Scrum Master, 
I didn't feel like I was part of the team because the developers are kind of out there doing their thing. The product managers are out there doing their thing and you're kind of stuck in between. You're not in any one team. You're not in the product side. You're not on the dev side. And so you're kind of just like in this little state of limbo, which is a very lonely place to be in. And so by kind of embedding yourself a little bit more in either way, you, you basically bring value, but also you start feeling like you belong a little bit more. And then finally, my final thing that I wish I would have known, at least at the beginning of my career, is that there is no silver bullet. We learned that there's a scrum guide and an agile manifesto, and that there's a specific theoretical way of doing everything. And everything that I've learned over my last 10 years of doing all this is that there is no silver bullet. There is no like little pill that you can take and everybody does scrum the same way. Every team is unique. Every culture, the dynamic, the way people interact, everything is unique. And sure, you can have a stable platform. Everybody can follow. You want to have the same operating rhythm, but you want to be adaptive. Agile is all about that feedback and it's all about that iterations and, and really being able to pivot. And you got to embrace that, not just from a theoretical perspective, but from a very practical perspective. When you're doing Scrum, it's not enough to just follow the law. It's not enough to just follow the way everybody says you have to do it because that might not yield the results that your company needs. Every team's going to be slightly different and you have to tailor your processes to what works for you and your team. You can't just hide behind the fact that, well, Scrum says that we got to do it this way or whatever. You really need to adapt here and you really need to adjust your processes, adjust the way you do everything so that the team exceeds. Because at the end of the day, if your team's not delivering, if your team's not pushing code out to the customer, and if your team is not making money for the company, then very quickly, you're going to find out that there's no money coming in. And if there's no money coming in, you're probably not going to have a job. So you want to make sure that you take the foundation and the core and the principles of Scrum and you embrace them, but you also not be naive to think that this is the end all solution to everything. You have to modify this and you have to just build what works for you and your team. And that's pretty much it. What do you think of my five lessons that I wish I would have known as a beginner Scrum master? I know some of them are a little deep, but these are things that, again, as I've observed over my last 10 year career doing this, I can look back and easily see, oh, wow, yeah, if, if I would have known this stuff, like my, my career trajectory would have been like exponentially higher. But because of like all great things in life, you have to experience and you have to go and get the lessons learned. But hopefully this video will give you some insight into what to expect. And then hopefully you can pivot and adjust your expectations accordingly. If you agree or don't disagree, let me know in the comment section below. I just want to engage. I, this is obviously a very very uh, subjective topic and you're probably going to have a different opinion on my perspectives which is totally cool but let's talk about it let's have a, a an adult conversation if you will and i'd love to hear what are your thoughts your concerns um or your opinions about the matter and if you made it this far and you haven't subscribed or you haven't dropped a like on the video make sure you hit those because those do help out the channel grow tremendously and i'll see you in the next one bye it's only worth it if you work for it it's only worth it if you work for it I won't stop till they hear me now